Good morning, everybody. This is like the fourth time I've tried to do this video. Of course, the enemy doesn't want me to get it out. Um, you get one at a time, one at a time. No, I'm trying to get that. And I will give you, you, you do that one. Um, I'm going to pray. Father God, I thank you for this word. I thank you for the dream. I thank you for all those who are watching. I pray the blood of Jesus over my family, over this word, over this day, over those who are watching. I plead the blood of Jesus. I dispatch angels. Holy Spirit, go before me. Speak through me. Forgive me of all my sins. Purify my heart, mind, body, soul. Wash me clean with your glory in the name of Jesus. And I ask that, Father God, miracle signs of wonders and salvation is birth through this video. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Um, Ephesians 6, 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the powers of darkness, um, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I was in um, a new apartment with my family. We had just moved there and we had just gotten um, furniture. And um, in my dream, this is a dream that I had. And I said, okay, everything's fit. I'm going to go real quick and go visit a friend. And so they said, okay. And I left and I went outside. And when I went outside, there was an old man who was standing to the left of me and he had a pitchfork and he was, um, he, he saw me walking and he started walking like he was coming towards me, but then he was right there and he started fighting me. And we began to fight back and forth, sparring and hitting towards each other and, you know, fencing for me, you know, just knocking each other out back and forth. But he wasn't actually hitting me. He was just like hitting whatever weapon I had. And um, we were just going back and forth and then he would leave. And then as I continued going, he came back and tried to fight with me again. And we fought, fought, fought. He never landed anything. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Then when I get to the apartment complex that I'm going to, the um, I have a friend that I knew from middle school, um, and he was standing in the well, really elementary, but uh, but standing in the middle of the the apartment complex courtyard, and he was bleeding from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet, and he was bent over. And as I, I walked to him, I was like, why is, I was so sad to see him. And he's like, please, somebody help me. So, of course, I ran over, got a pitch, I got a pitchfork, and I started fighting the enemy. And um, I saw the weapon on the ground, and I picked it up, and I started fighting the enemy. And we were battling, and he stopped fighting with my friend. So that goes to show that the enemy, which was Satan, um, didn't, have any remorse. He didn't care that my friend was already bleeding. He just wanted to continue to torment him, beat him in his position of, of, of pain. And when I started to fight, he, of course he was stopped fighting my friend or, and attacking him. But then, um, and then he came behind me and started to chase me and we were fighting again. And then there was a door open and I, and I entered in through the door and I locked the door and he couldn't get in. Hallelujah. But the downfall of that is that my friend was still in the courtyard and he never left that part. He just stayed where he was at. He didn't move. He stayed in that position of being attacked. So when I woke up, I said, God, what is this meaning? And I knew it was Satan who was who was there, and he was trying to catch me off guard. He tried to deceive me at first, trying to act like, oh, I'm an old guy. I'm not going to do anything. Like He even looked like he was almost like an old farmer, hunched over kind of guy. Like, he's not going to move at all. In complete, you know, he was completely, um, he was just deceiving me. So then the other part was, I was like, well, why was my friend just standing there? And and God reminded me, the Holy Spirit reminded me that my friend had a certain belief, and I believe Mama, it might have been you blow this up? Mormon. Um, that, could you blow this up? Yeah, please? after I'm done, honey, I could blow it up. Or ask Dad to blow it up. You could ask Daddy. Maybe he'll blow it up for you. Um, I think it might have been Mormon um, that he didn't believe in the Holy Spirit or Jesus, I don't believe. 
And um, he believed in God, but he didn't believe in the Holy Spirit or Jesus. Well, the Holy Spirit and Jesus is what kept me from getting hit from the enemy. The Holy Spirit and Jesus is what kept me from every attack of the enemy. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus kept me, kept me, kept me from being attacked. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. We need them both. <laughs> we need them both. It's not just one. We need them both. And, and that's why Jesus left us the Holy Spirit. He is our comforter. He's our protector. He is our wisdom. He's our revelation, right? He's the power. He's our strength. Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit to overcome the enemy to, of his attacks. So if you don't have Jesus, please right now just say, Father God, I don't know Jesus, but Show me him, reveal him to me and forgive me of my sins and fill me up and give me Jesus, right? Reveal Jesus to me, accept him into your hearts. Just say, Jesus, fill me up. Holy Spirit, come and fill me up in the name of Jesus. Fill me up, Holy Spirit. Fill me up, Holy Spirit. Stir me up. Stir me up, and every day I say, Father, forgive me of my sins. Every day I say it because every day I sin. Big or little, small, thought, whatever it could be, I, I mess up. And so I have to say, Father, God, forgive me, because, I'm, you know, we're fallen, all of us. We mess up every day. We all do. <laughs> and it's a daily thing where we have to say, God, forgive me. Purify my heart. You know, just get us in alignment with you, Jesus. That alone also battles the enemy. Why? Because the enemy is also the accuser of men. He goes up to heaven in the court area and tries to accuse us. How do we stop his accusations? By repenting, pure repentance. He won't have anything on us. Why? Because when we repent, all of our sins in God's eyes in the book is washed away, which means we might remember it, but it's erased in God's eyes. So we have to live as if it never happened. Though we have to remember what God has already done and erased for us. We know that we're forgiven. We know we're washed clean, but we have to know that it's washed away in God's eyes. So every time we come before him and everything we do wrong, we start over again. And so that's why it's so important to say, God, forgive me, wash me clean, purify me, forgive all those who come against me every day, right? And when people mess up, we already talk about it, but we we forgive them immediately. That's it. Let it go. Because God lets us let it lets it go for us. He forgives us. So he says he can't forgive us unless we forgive him and forgive them, right? So if we can't forgive, he can't forgive us. So the attacks of the enemy are real. I saw how serious he was about trying to take us out. I saw how important it is to be covered by the blood of Jesus. And I saw how sad it is to be walking without Jesus, to be walking without the Holy Spirit. It is a horrible experience because you're getting attacked left and right. You're literally getting attacked left and right. So this is it. That's all it was. Um, Satan is after those people who don't have Jesus, who don't have the Holy Spirit. And he is obviously after those who do. He was t attacking me. But the only way that I was able to get through those attacks was with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So he's after everybody. Don't think that um, you are, you're any different just because you don't have Jesus or the Holy Spirit. You're going to get attacked. And don't think you're different if you do have Jesus and the Holy Spirit. You're going to get attacked. The thing is, that's his whole agenda. He's got hate towards anybody, everybody. He's just hate. He is hate. He's death. He's, he's horrible. And so what we have to do is be ready, suited and booted, right? It says the armor of God. We have to have the shield of God. We have to have the helmet of God, the belt of truth, right? We have to have the boots of righteousness, correct? I don't know if I'm saying it all right. I need to get those down. But you know what I'm talking about? Get the shield on. I also wanted to share this one that last thing. I was trying to run through it real fast. Um, but one day we were in church and we were visiting this church. And it was a wonderful church. We love this church. Um, 
But anyways, we're in church and we were listening to the the sermon and a witch walked in. The Holy Spirit literally oomphed in my spirit that there's a witch sitting next to you. She literally sat right down on my row. And there wasn't very many people in my row. We were in the back. So I saw that she was a witch. I was like, okay. So I just started speaking in tongues because the man was teaching. And as the witch is... um, the witch is there next to me. As I start speaking in tongues, I start pleading the blood of Jesus over me and my husband because she's making eye contact over at us, right? So I just cover our, my husband and I in the blood of Jesus and cover us. Well, then I start speaking in tongues and she starts to manifest right next to me, like starts manifesting. She can't sit still. Um, she's, she's, she's like, bending over like this, acting all wild. She came in the middle of service, right, with the agenda to set curses on people. And when I when I acknowledged her, she didn't want to make eye contact with me. And I felt the spirit so strong on her of the witchcraft. So I knew God, the Holy Spirit showed me she was a witch. I was like, okay, whatever. I believe the blood of Jesus over me and my husband. And I started speaking in tongues. Well, then... The best part, when um, towards the end of the service, she stood up because people started leaving. And she literally stood up in a position of war. And she had, you know, like she was battling. And she stood up and she started facing the people who were leaving. She was trying to put curses on these people. Um, Whatever her, I don't know anything really about witchcraft, but I could see that that's what she was doing. Well, we started to worship. So then in worship, I began to battle and worship. You know, I got to, because it's so loud when everybody's worshiping, you can say whatever you, you could just sing out in tongues. And I just started to worship, Jesus, 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 you are holy. Because worship is all about God. It's all about Jesus. And the more you make it more intimate, and envision him, close your eyes and just really experience Jesus. Allow his presence to come and hold your hands, his hands to hold your hand. Reach out, move your hands, reach out and allow him to hold you as you worship and let him know that you sincerely are at his feet. I just feet the other one. You can get another one, baby. But that's a no. That trans, you can have one more. But that's a no. You could ask him if you can have one more. Go ask him. Um, it will transform everything. It will transform everything when you're worshiping. But as I was doing that, as I was in deep worship, that witch fleed. She fleed. She didn't even stay to the end of the worship song. She was gone. She came. She was only there for like 10 minutes. Okay. Okay. He said, no, then you need to listen. Um, and she did, she left, she was gone. And so the power of worship, we'll be doing it today. Don't worry. We're going to do it with water though. They're really for water is what they're for. Okay. I'll make, I'm going to, don't lose them all because we're going to use them. So yeah. So that was what it was. She fleed, she fleed. And that's what the enemy will do. He'll come in to attack his agenda. He has no stops. He does not care. It was blow after blow. I'm talking about he was on fire ready trying to get me. He was trying to get me. And it didn't happen. Hallelujah. Because the Holy Spirit and Jesus. But I'm telling you right now, he does not play. He does not care. And just like that witch, she did not care what she was doing. She had no desire to do anything that pleased um, she didn't have a desire to do anything. We pray that the witches get saved in the name of Jesus. But at the end of the day, the, the whole situation was, is that the enemy is there and set there to attack. And he'll come in many forms with many different faces. And so we have to be ready and we have to be covered before you go out of the house. Just like in my dream, when I went out of the house, the enemy was waiting there with a pitchfork. He might have looked like an old man. He was waiting before you go out of the house, we plead the blood of Jesus over our family. I plead the blood of Jesus and I ask you for yep, I ask you to go before me and around me and behind me. 
So, Father God, we plead the blood of Jesus over this day, over those who are watching, over my family. I seal this dream in Jesus' name, the word in the name of Jesus. We ask that more than more, more than anything, people around the world will accept you, Jesus, and they will walk with you and talk with you, and that the Holy Spirit will fill them and flood this earth. Lord, and we also pray for those people who are supposed to be persecuted tonight. Lord, we bind that spirit of death in the name of Jesus. And we ask that, Father God, you give them life. We speak life over them. Miracle signs and wonders as in Paul and Silas's story, Lord, how you broke their bounds. Lord Jesus, we pray you break their chains and they're free in Jesus' holy name. We believe it and receive it. And it's all for your glory, Father. In Jesus' name, amen.